Learning the truth about Islam, that is the topic of tonight's byline. We cannot blame the attack and murder of Lee Rigby on Islam or on Muslims, we're told. Well, we're told this just about after every attack, plot, or murder. And that's true to a degree, but only a degree. I don't blame the Muslim shopkeeper that I buy my lunch or snacks from. But what if the Muslim leaders or organizations, be it in Canada or Britain? In Britain, there are several organizations that spread hate openly. And no, I'm not talking about people spewing hate at Muslims, but rather Muslims spewing hate at Britain. Abu Hazma, well, he's the infamous hate preacher from Finsbury Park in London, and he was only shut down because he was arrested on terrorism charges and eventually extradited to the United States. Others, like the London-born Anjem Chowdhury, he still operates in the open, spreading his hateful form of Islam. I spoke about Chowdhury yesterday. After the attack on Lee Rigby, Chowdhury took to Twitter to justify the killing by pointing to British troops in Muslim lands. And while Chowdhury was tweeting his justification for murder, police were arresting two young British men, a 23-year-old and a 22-year-old in Bristol. Apparently, they said some things against Islam. So they were arrested by police for writing things that were, quote, of a, a racist or anti-religious nature. This is fascinating to me because a couple of days before the attack, Chowdhury was calling for an overthrow of the British government and the caliphate coming back. He wasn't arrested. Uh, don't you love once Great Britain where freedom of speech goes one way, where it's used to defend people like Chowdhury who lives in a lovely home despite not working? He's on benefits or as he calls it, jihad seekers allowance. In the time of Harun Rashid, and in times, my dear brothers, of these people, they used to give income support 20 days in advance. SubhanAllah. Nowadays, you get it two weeks in a race. Not that I'm on income support or job seekers allowance. We are on dawah seekers allowance and jihad seekers allowance, you know. We take the jizya, which is our hawk anyway. The normal situation, brother, really, is to take money from the kafir, isn't it? <laughs> so this is normal situation. They give us the money, you work, give us the money. Allah Akbar. We take the money. Hopefully there's nobody from the DSS listening to this. <laughs> A couple of words I want to point out there, Kufar and Jiza. He's talking about Kufar, that's anyone that's not Muslim, pure Muslim like him. And then, then there's the Jiza, that is the tax, the Islamic tax that non-Muslims have to pay. That's what he views his job seekers allowance or jihad seekers allowance as. He gets full defense of the British government, the British taxpayer. Grannies get rested outside of mosques. Chowdhury has a link to one of the two men that killed Lee Rigby, Michael Abdelagio. I'm not sure how you say his name. Well, he attended some events that Chowdhury ran with the now banned group Al Mahajurin, a group so radical it was actually banned. Well, that's Britain, you might be saying. It doesn't happen here. We don't have those kinds of problems. I'm not so sure. There are mosques across the country that cite the Muslim Brotherhood and other radical groups as their source of inspiration. And this should be worrisome, whether it's mosques, student groups, or other organizations that are part of polite company, the kind embraced by those wanting to do community outreach. I was alerted uh, this morning to a news release put out by Imam Saeed Sohawar, so, Soharwardi. Still can't say his name, despite saying it for years. Many of you might know him as the man who laid the complaint with the Alberta Human Rights Council against my friend Ezra Levant. The release condemned the killing of a British soldier and said it had nothing to do with Islam and should be properly called Wahhabism. Now I've spoken about Wahhabism before, it's one of the radical schools of Islamic thought exported around the world using Saudi oil money. Good for him, I thought. Wahhabism needs to be denounced. But then I started looking more at Sowahardi's background. I, I found disturbing op-eds calling for Sharia in Canada. I found news releases denouncing Christians for helping tsunami victims in Muslim lands and accusing them of kidnapping Muslim babies. Here's the quote from that news release put out after the tsunami. ISCC, that's one of the groups he is associated with, strongly condemns the exploitation of tsunami victims by Christian missionaries. There have been several reports that Christian missionaries are kidnapping Muslim children in Indonesia. It is now proven that the Christian missionaries do not help people on humanitarian grounds. They help people in order to exploit their needs and convert them to Christianity. Funny, I, I didn't see Muslim countries rushing to help Southeast Asia after the tsunami. In a 2004 op-ed, he called for Sharia in Canada by saying that Sharia cannot be customized for specific country, uh, countries. These universal divine laws are for all people of all countries for all times. No thanks, I don't want to live under Sharia. And finally, this is a fellow who has quoted Yusuf al-Karadawi 
on his website. Who's that? Well, al Qardawi is an intellectual leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, currently banned from entering Britain and other European countries. But he does host a show on Al Jazeera. That's the great journalistic network that Al Gore and Hillary Clinton praise as being so wonderful. One we should all watch. Well, here's an example of what this uh, gentleman said on air in 2009. O oh Allah, take your enemies, the enemies of Islam. O oh Allah, take the Jews, the treacherous aggressors. O oh Allah, take this pro prolificate, cunning, arrogant band of people. O oh Allah, they have spread much tyranny and corruption in your land. Pour your wrath upon them, O oh our God. Lie in wait for them. This is unbelievable. There even appeared to be a link between Sohar, Sohar Dari, his mosque in Calgary, and Chowdhury, the hate monger in Britain. But so Hardari, well, he assures me that's not the case. They're just both using a, a name that's a regular name for Sunni Islam. Still, he's got a lot of odd statements, a lot of odd connections. So do many so-called respectable Muslim groups in Canada. Most Canadians don't understand Islam. We're loath to take a, a stand against something we don't know much about for fear of being called a bigot. But we do need to understand what we're dealing with before it's too late, like it's too late in Britain. And that's the byline. Enough's enough. Our message is enough, enough. We have weak leaders, weak police. Our police and our leaders tiptoe around this issue. This issue is political Islam. It's political Islam that's spreading across this country. Police out in full force for the EDL protest. As noted yesterday, they did take 14 minutes to arrive at the open open air, broad daylight butchery of drummer Lee Rigby. Joining me now for further discussion on what's happening in Britain and what we need, need to know about Islam. Sun News contributor and columnist John Robson. John uh, ended the monologue by saying we can't be afraid to ask questions about what Islam is and about these associations. But I think that that gentleman in the video, weak leaders, weak police, I think that goes across the Western world and they're afraid to ask those questions. Oh, they are. They certainly are, including the question, why are we more concerned that someone would shout an insult outside a mosque than we are at a stream of abuse coming from inside a mosque, which clearly is having the effect of radicalizing young people, leading to acts of violence. I mean, how many Muslims have been beheaded by Christians in the streets of Britain? That surely ought to give us an indication of how, which way the really acute threat is. Okay, but, but, but let, well, now let, we're let me stop ask the you question, there. Okay? Let me stop you there, because I want to play a clip that's related to that, because a person with the Muslim Public Affairs Council says, oh, no, 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 no. we're the victims. Here it is. A wider community that do not understand Muslims. They don't understand why this is happening. It's not in the control of the Muslim community. The Muslim community are victims here. I, I'm not sure how he comes at that. Well, maybe then they're victims of people who claim to be Muslims and go around shouting Allahu Akbar and killing infidels and citing Quran verses and thus somehow giving people the impression that there's something wrong within the Muslim community in Britain. And when an incident like this happens, you always get a few high profile spokesmen. First, you get a lot of non-Muslims saying, well, that's not real Islam. And I'm an expert on that because I have a degree in sociology and I'm a politician. And then you get these Muslim groups who say, well, this has nothing to do with Islam. But what I want to know is what are ordinary Muslims saying around the dinner table to one another, to their children? What are they saying in the mosque when there is no camera there? And at this, this is the point where I want to start thumping the Quran, not in a disrespectful way, but in the way that Christians are often known to thump the Bible. When Muslims are telling us this is or is not true Islam, I want to hear them citing Quran verses and arguing with each other. Which verse means what? Which one takes precedence if there appears to be a conflict? I want to hear a theological argument in public. And I want to encourage everybody. Muslim or non-Muslim, read the Quran because they all say it comes out of this. But someone was just saying, well, this isn't Islam, it's Wahhabism. Okay, but the Wahhabis say ours is the true faith. Whether this is the Canadian terror. the Constitution. So read it. This is what they claim to be motivated by. See, are the radicals legitimate or not in pointing to verses in the Quran that seem to say there should be one political community, no separation of church and state, infidels ought to be subjected to legal sanction and possibly worse. And let the moderates come back at us with Quran verses, not just public religions. Oh, well, that's not real Islam. 
Why isn't that real Islam? Well, you may be right, okay. but show me the Quran verse that says it's not. And, and you've got people like this Chowdhury, who, you know, I showed the tweet earlier, uh, talking about the caliphate and will overthrow the government. He doesn't get arrested for that. They arrested an 85-year-old woman for saying something, a senior citizen. There's Chowdhury again, uh, saying... Uh, Rid us of the occupiers and oppressors, grant us the caliph. He wants to overthrow the government. Nothing's done to him. I mean, this again shows weakness in the British government. Uh, so nothing's done to him. Nothing said of him. He says that he is of the same branch of Islam as someone like Sahadri, uh, the, the Calgary imam, who's out saying, oh, this is Wahhabis, don't call this real Islam. They both say they're from the same branch of Islam. They say they represent the same thing. I don't know that so how Drew would go as far as this fellow, but this is part of the problem that, that you're describing. Show us the argument. It's not happening. Yeah, you get two Jews arguing about Judaism. They pull out their Torahs. Martin Luther is preaching no work. Someone says, what about the epistle of James? He says, it's a letter of straw. You know, they're arguing about what it says in the Bible or in the Torah. Let Muslims argue in public about what it says in the Quran. Otherwise, I get the feeling we're being snowed. Okay, uh, 30 seconds left. Got to ask you about the, uh, do we need to start asking more questions about the As Muslim student associations that point to the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, different mosques, different groups that point to the Muslim Brotherhood as as their, their source, their font of wisdom? Yeah, where's the money coming from and what are they saying? We should at least know what they're saying, pay attention to it, take it seriously whether or not any of it strikes us as possibly being criminal if it is radical poison a torrent of insults against the kufars let's know that's what's going on and ask other muslims why do you not take strong social action against this all right john robson as always good talking to you send us your thoughts on all of this byline at sunmedia.ca stick around we've got more to come